Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today I will have a, the final lecture about distribution of electricity, distribution uh, to consumers. This is the final stage of distribution. I mean, that's the purpose actually, right? Why, why do we produce electricity? To consume it, to do something um, important for us. Okay, now, this lecture is part of the course uh, Physics for Teens, presented on Unizor.com. Um, I suggest you to watch lecture from this website, because um, it's part of the course, and the website has menu with proper order, um, and uh, there is actually a prerequisite course called Mass for Teens on the same Unizor.com, which I believe is uh, the necessary component of your background before you start uh, learning physics. Now, this lecture, actually the whole chapter, um, is not uh, about mathematics. It's only kind of explanatory kind of things. But most of the physics involves math to a very, very high degree. Okay, now, um, in the previous lecture, um, I have introduced the concept of a grid as something which all the producers of electricity, like power stations, uh, generators, whatever, if they would like to distribute this electricity to the population um, of a country, they actually have to adhere to certain standards and be connected to something which we call a grid. Right? Remember the grid. So, the grid allows you to um, uh, assure that there is an uninterrupted power supply to all the consumers connected to the grid. So it's basically like a parallel connection. All the producers of electricity and uh, are connected parallel and all the consumers are connected basically parallel. So they are um, uh, assured that there is always something. If one particular generator stopped working for whatever reason, there are others which contribute to the grid the proper amount of energy, which is then consumed. And obviously there is certain balance between producing and consuming. The more we consume, the more generators we have to really install, right? Now, it might um, make an impression that there is some kind of a gigantic wire, well actually two wires, um, all the producers of electricity, all the power stations, etc., are connected to it, and all the consumers are connected to it. Uh, and there is a high voltage uh, on this wire, which assures that um, our losses of electricity, losses of energy on heat, are smaller. That's not the case. Much more complex situation. Now obviously when we are transferring energy, electrical energy, um, on, on a big distance, we do have to have this high voltage. Now our um, devices which, which we are using, like electricity, our electric motors, etc., are not um, designed for such a high voltage. They are always designed for a lower voltage with, with, with higher current. And it means that we have to have transformers. Also, generators are not generating the high voltage. We need transformers to bring the voltage up to the level used on, on the long transmission lines. But now, as soon as we have covered this long distance, let's say we have reached a city, we can't really put a transformer in front of every device which consumes the electricity, obviously. That's just impractical. And uh, uh, the transformer which transforms a very high voltage, and high voltage means basically like hundreds of thousands of volts used along the long transmission lines. So, transformer which con uh, which trans tra transforms this high voltage into lower, like a couple of hundred volts, 
are big, bulky, expensive. So you can't really attach such a uh, transformer in front of each device, obviously. So what do we do? Well, we do it in steps, basically. Let's do it differently. Let's have this grid, which we were talking about before, like a high voltage grid, where big um, power producers are connected to be one thing and then we will make another grid inside the city um, which is also a grid basically uh, and it's connected to one transformer between the high voltage grid used for transmission and lower not low but lower um, voltage which is then distributed in the city. So, <coughs> let's say these are your power producing um, electric uh, power stations, generators, whatever it is. Now, there is a um, high voltage coming to to this so this is one and this is another okay and this is going further so these are two generators which basically um, producing electricity and they are uh, connected parallel to each other um, and uh, I have to have this little things as well like this they're connected parallel to each other and this is the main transmission wire and it's a long one then we have a city so what I'm suggesting is let's put a transformer here and lower the voltage from whatever the high voltage is um, in this transmission line into another and then make a grid within the city. Okay, that's an idea. Now, within the city we have already lower voltage here than there and higher current. But these are smaller distances so we can actually think about what is the most economically viable way, um, what kind of voltage is the most beneficiary from the cost perspective most likely. Uh, and then we can distribute it in the city along the streets. So you have one street, you have another street, and you have another street. Now, these are going to streets, but now we have buildings on the streets. Buildings might have, you know, a certain number of apartments, or it's a private house, doesn't really matter. Whatever it is, we might actually need, again, um, lowering the voltage. So, what makes sense is the street voltage, let's call it this way, street voltage, which is produced here, might have in front of the building one particular transformer which transforms street electricity into building electricity voltage, which is even lower. And that one is already uh, fit for devices. So these are, in this particular case, it's a three levels. So one level is the high voltage, then you have a, well, let's call it city voltage, and then we have a building voltage. In any case, it doesn't really matter how we call them, what matter is that we are gradually reducing the voltage from the very, very high to acceptable level for devices which we are using. And that's basically the general design of real distribution to consumers. It might be more than three levels. In this case, it's three, maybe it's four. Maybe it's one uh, for like a big region and then within the region there is another little grid. So 
But my point is that greed is not something uh, which is like everything is interconnected. That's not the case. Greed is actually a combination of many greeds localized, which are connected among themselves um, to uh, bigger grids or high voltage grids through transformers. So there is no real connection. Transformer is not a connection. Transformer is some kind of a way we transform energy from one grid to another grid and that other grid can have lower or higher energy, higher or lower or higher voltage. So this is energy distribution. So electricity by itself, as it is electrons, which are produced here, are not going there. They are ending their way here. And then other electrons are um, started moving here because of the um, alternating current will produce uh, alternating magnetic field in the transformer, and uh, that uh, induces the, the electricity in the secondary wire, right? So basically, there are not physically connected wires. Electrons are not moving all the way to consumers. But we have one grid, and then we have another grid, and then another grid, etc., etc. All grids are connected among themselves through transformers, not physically connected like wires, wire to wire, but transformers through the magnetic uh, the field, which is basically uh, circulating inside the magnetic inside the transformer's core. Now, what is important, however, that within each grid, let's say the big grid or a building grid or anything, whatever, um, all the devices must be in sync with themselves. So, in this particular case, what's important is that if we are introducing um, another, well, if there are no producers of electricity here, if only consumers are, then we don't have to worry about synchronization or anything else, because this is one, this transformer, for instance, is producing one particular frequency, whatever frequency comes in, there is a frequency which comes out, maybe with a shift in the phase, but doesn't really matter, but everything else is just consuming this electricity. But if we want to put another, let's say, lower power or something like this, another generator, for instance, a group of buildings can have their own small electric power station and produce electricity only for these buildings, but it can produce more which means the rest of the electricity which we are not consuming must actually go back to the grid, which means it's supposed to be synchronized. Because again, as you remember from the previous lecture, if we have many different producers of electricity connected to the same wire, to the same physical wire, the same grid basically, uh, they have to be of the same voltage, of the same frequency, and of the same phase. So they don't really work against each other. So um, let me just give you a, a real example of the voltage, for instance. The voltage here might be something like 600,000 volts. The voltage which is converted from one to, uh, from this ultra high voltage to, um, let's say, call it city voltage, whatever, can be something like 7. 1,200 volts. You see, significantly smaller, like almost a, almost a thousand uh, ratio, almost a thousand, a little less. Then each transformer, which is transforming energy here, should actually go even lower. Let's say it's 240 volts, which goes to the building, and that's distributed through the building, and actually it can convert into two or three different voltages, with two, two or three different, basically, physical wires. Like, for instance, 120 volts. So, for instance, in the apartment buildings where I live, every apartment has two inputs, basically. One is 240 volts, and that volts, another is 120 volts. All the smaller devices, like a lamp, for instance, uh, are connected to 120. But if I have a big air conditioner, 
I have a special outlet which has 240 volts in it. So basically that's a general picture. Now let's talk about one more thing. The generators are not really generated, generating this type of a voltage. Um, for instance, uh, I've heard that Niagara Falls, for instance, um, power station, I think it has 13,000 volts producing, which means that we have to have here another transformer which actually is raising the voltage. So this, trans this transformer is increasing the voltage and decreasing the current. So the small current goes along the long lines and these are uh, decreasing the voltage back to the level acceptable for the street sides and the, and the buildings. So, for instance, in the city you have wiring along the streets, which basically are street wires. In this particular case it's 7,200 volts. But then, in front of the building, you have some kind of a transformer well, in, in front of my building, for instance, there is a transformer, it looks like a big barrel, um, which transforms, for instance, 7200 into 240 and, and 120, to two different ways. And um, another complication, which I did mention, but I didn't really exemplify it. Um, let's say you have uh, decided to put a solar panel on your roof. Well, it which, but actually, the solar panel produces uh, direct current. It's not alternating current. But all your devices in your um, house or your apartment, they are usually um, AC, alternating current. So, what's the complication? Well, number one, you have to convert DC into AC, direct current into alternating current, which is not such a simple thing. Actually, alternating to direct is much easier. But anyway, there are special devices called inverters, which can invert direct current into alternating current. Now, you're feeding your lamps, your refrigerator from the solar panel. Okay, fine. But in many cases, solar panels produce excess of electricity, which can be returned back to the grid, which means they have to be connected to a grid somewhere here. This is a building, right? So if there is a solar panel here, which generates certain uh, electricity converted into alternating, first DC and then into, into AC, we have to synchronize it with this grid. Because these are physically connected things. So at least within the building, we have to really uh, do it. Or if you want to connect it to a street level, we have to uh, synchronize it with, uh, uh, with the street level, which means voltage which means uh, frequency and, um, and phase. Actually, voltage is easy because you just put a transformer. Um, frequency is also easy. It's always constant, like in 50, 50 or 60 hertz, there is no problem. But to adjust transformer, uh, sorry, inverter, to adjust inverter, which is producing the electricity from the DC to AC, to adjust it in some way, in some way so it's in phase, uh, with the uh, electricity which is uh, in the grid, that's not an easy thing and it requires certain skills. So, that's just small complication, let's put it this way. Um, I, I was trying to make this point in the previous lecture that the grid is not something uh, which we have just made and it, it's there basically and doesn't really require anything. It's a very complicated um, number uh, of interrelated uh, devices which require constant attention, um, constant maintenance, and it's also um, not uh, fixed in, in a way that we, we are producing, we, we are manufacturing new uh, generators, new equipment, uh, new power stations are coming into, um, into the, uh, uh, the whole grid. So basically there are a lot of things which we have to do all the time. So it requires a lot of time, a lot of attention, a lot of money. It's very expensive, but the purpose is to make a, an uninterrupted um, uh, energy supply to the whole country, basically, to the economy of the whole country. 
So what else did they cover? Uh, yeah, basically that's it. Yeah, I was talking even about solar panels. All right, so this lecture basically completes the distribution of electricity. Uh, a few lectures, and uh, and again, the grid is the most important component of it. Um, so next uh, couple of lectures will be about usage of electricity, and um, mm, that's basically when it's already reached to the consumer. So we'll talk about consumers. Um, and the whole, basically, the whole chapter is not really very messy magical. It's all explanatory kind of thing. So I would like you to understand that uh, the whole thing has certain structure, has certain components, and what kind of components. Basically, that's the purpose. So that's it for today. Uh, thank you very much. Oh, by the way, I forgot. Um, in the notes for this lecture on unizor.com, there are much prettier pictures than this one, basically of more or less a model of uh, of the grid, how how it looks like. So I do suggest you to go to the website and look at the notes for this lecture. You have to go through phys physics 14, electromagnetism, and then distribution of electricity. It's uh, uh, one of the lectures in, in the distribution uh, thing. All right, that's it. Thank you very much, and good luck. <laughs>